Rahman Rahim. Hello students, welcome to the electrical engineering channel. In this lecture, I am going to discuss the last method of interpolation which is included in this course. That last method is uh, supplying interpolation. In supplying interpolation, interpolant is a special type of piecewise polynomial called a supplying. So supplying interpolation also has two types. Uh, one is the linear supplying interpolation, second one is the quadratic supplying interpolation. In linear supply and interpolation, we will evaluate uh, the equation of the straight line between two successive points, and uh, that will be the first order equation, and that will join the two successive supplies by the straight line. In quadratic supply and interpolation, the supplies will be passing uh, from all the points. And uh, they will not be actually straight. There will be curved sublines in that case. So quadratic subline interpolation is more accurate. And you will see that in quadratic subline interpolation, we won't see any corners or discontinuities between two successive sublines as we are seeing in this linear subline interpolation case. So let's first discuss linear subline interpolation. And we are given four data points for example this is the first data point this is the second third and fourth so there will be three functions which will be required to join all those points by means of straight line so we can use simply two point formula because we know the coordinates of all the points x and y coordinates so we can use two point formula to first find the equation of the straight line from first point to the second then another two point formula to find the equation of straight line between second point and the third point and so on. So for the first supply which is lying between x0, y0 and x1, y1, that function will be used and it is equal to f of x uh, equal to f of x0 plus fx1 minus fx0 divided by x1 minus x0 into x minus x0. So this expression is valid for x between x0 and x1. Similarly for the second supply this expression will be used. So it will be valid between x1 and x2 and between x2 and x3 we will use this expression so all of these expressions are the formulas of two point formula and these are the equations of the straight line so the two point formula is also written over here which is a very simple fx minus fx1 divided by fx2 minus fx1 is equal to x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 so let's solve the same previous example by using linear supply and interpolation and uh, after solving this example this uh, concept will be more clear so we have to find out the velocity of the rocket at t is equal to 16 and we are given uh, these data points so we are given the velocity at t is equal to 15 and t is equal to 20. So we can use supply and interpolation to evaluate the velocity at t is equal to 16. So this is our t0, t1. This is vt0 and vt1. So first let's calculate uh, the equation of the straight line between these two points. So vt is equal to 362 plus 78 plus um, this expression vt1 minus vt0 divided by t1 minus t0 is equal to this expression into t minus 15. So let's uh, put the value of t equal to 16 in this expression and the velocity is equal to 393.7. So that was quite simple and straightforward by using linear supply and interpolation. Now let's move towards quadratic supply and interpolation and that method is uh, relatively more complex as compared to the linear method and in this method we have to use quadratic equation between two successive points and uh, the equation of the supply will be given by this second order polynomial which is a quadratic equation so between point x0 and x1 we will use uh, this quadratic equation and uh, this is the first supply and that's why we have used the coefficients a1, b1, c1. For the second supply, which is lying between points x1 and x2, the coefficients used will be a2, b2, and c2. And for the last supply, which is present between the second last point and the last point, we will use uh, uh, these coefficients a and b and, and c. And. So there are total n supplies. There are total n plus 1 data points. And... Uh, Let's solve one example uh, by using quadratic supply interpolation. And 
this is the same example and we have to determine the velocity at is equal to 16 using quadratic supply and interpolation we have to find out the distance covered by the rocket from t is equal to 11 to t is equal to 16 seconds and uh, using the quadratic supply as velocity function we have to find the acceleration at t is equal to 16. so that example is going to be very comprehensive and very interesting uh, because we have more number of unknown terms that have to be found out and uh, this uh, problem has to be solved using MATLAB because uh, you will see that there are so much algebraic equations involved in this problem and it is almost impossible to solve so many equations uh, uh, by hand so that's why we have to use the MATLAB platform to find the solution of this problem so we have total five supplies in this problem because uh, from here you can see that we have total six data points so we th there will be five supplies uh, to solve this problem and the equations of those five supplies can be written over here so this is the first supply which is lying from t equal to 0 to 10 from 10 to 15 is the second supply and so on and this is the last supply So you can see that we have five supplies over here and one supply contains three unknowns. So there will be in total 15 unknowns. So somehow we have to build up 15 equations in order to find out the values of these 15 unknown coefficients. Otherwise, we won't be able to evaluate the values of all these coefficients and we cannot solve this problem in that case. So first we will assume that one supply passes through two successive data points okay for example this is the first supply it is passing from this point and this point as well so in the equation of the first supply we can use the first point and second point and we can uh, build two equations uh, from this information right so each quadratic supply passes through two consecutive data points so the first supply passes from x0 and first supply also passes from x1 so we can substitute x0 instead of uh, x in the equation of the first supply and we will substitute x equal to x1 in the equation of the first supply so we have made two equations from the first supply so if this is the first supply we can put 0 and then we can put 10 in this equation and uh, there will be two equations Similarly, for the second supply, we can again put these two points and again we will get two equations from the second supply and so on. So, in total, from five supplies, we have built up ten equations. So, we still need five more equations to get total fifteen equations and then we will be able to evaluate fifteen unknown coefficients. So, this is the first uh, uh, strategy to build up 10 equations and uh, this condition gives two n equations since there are n quadratic supplies going through two consecutive data points so in this case we have n supplies so there are 15 unknowns and uh, this condition will give us uh, 2 into 5 equal to 10 equations so still we need five more equations so now we will use another condition that the first derivative of two quadratic supplies are continuous at the interior points so this is the first supply and this is the second supply here we have used linear supply interpolation but in quadratic supply interpolation where one more condition is that there should be smooth transition from first supply to the second supply so here we are seeing corner so this is actually a discontinuity at the interior point so in order to avoid this uh, discontinuity there should be a smooth transition or there should be a curved nature of the supply uh, from the first uh, supply to the second so at all the interior points uh, the successive supplies must undergo smooth transition so that smooth transition is possible if we assume that the rate of change of the first supply and the rate of change of the second supply at the interior point is same so it means that the first derivative of two quadratic supplies are continuous at the interior points. So this is a derivative of the first supply 2a1x plus b1. 
this is the derivative of the second subline and these two derivatives must be equal at x is equal to x1 so that is what we have used over here so the two are equal at x equal to x1 so this minus this is equal to zero and x should be equal to x1 so we have built up one equation from this condition for the uh, first and the second supply so we will get one equation for this point one equation for this point so uh, uh, the number of uh, interior points will give us the same number of uh, equations by using this uh, derivative condition so in our case we are actually having six points and the interior points are actually four so this is the exterior point this is also the point boundary point so the interior points in this case are actually four so in this case we will get four more equations by using this condition so the derivative of uh, the two sublines at the interior points must be equal so we will get n minus one equations okay so n minus one equations means we were having five data points and by using this condition we have obtained four equations so in total now we have uh, 10 plus 4 equal to 14 equations and still we are uh, missing one equation so in this case we can do a very simple assumption uh, or and that assumption is that we have assumed that a1 is equal to 0 so this is the first coefficient and we have assumed that this first coefficient is equal to 0 so this will give us the 15th equation or we can also assume a1 equal to 1 this can also be the possibility similarly we can also assign any other coefficient the value of 0 or 1 or 10 so it won't make uh, so much difference and uh, at the end you will see that we still get the acceptable result so we have assumed a1 which is the first coefficient equal to 0 and this actually is our 15th equation so now in total we have 15 equations and 15 unknowns so we have to build up uh, these 15 simultaneous equations in the matrix form and then we can use the matlab command of line solve to evaluate all the 15 unknowns so each quadratic subline passes through two consecutive data points so now we are moving towards our problem which is given to us so this is the first subline and we have put the value of 0 and 10 and made two equations similarly this is the second subline it actually uh, passes from t equal to 10 to t equal to 15 from 15 to 20 we have the third subline so these are further two equations and these are again two equations and these are again two equations so these are total 10 equations and the quadratic sublines have continuous derivatives at the interior data points so at t is equal to 10 this is the derivative of the first subline minus derivative of the second subline at t is equal to 10 should be equal to 0 similarly at t is equal to 15 this is the second equation this is the third and this is the fourth equation so by looking at these equations uh, we can uh, build up the matrix right so for example this is our first equation and uh, all the unknown variables are a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 up to a5 b5 and c5 so these are the unknown values and from the first equation the coefficients are uh, 0 0 1 similarly 100 10 1 right so 0 0 1 100 10 1 all other values will be 0 and uh, similarly from the second equation we can uh, see that 100 10 1 225 15 1 so 100 10 1 225 15 1 and so on so these are the first 10 equations and uh, the equations which are uh, established by the derivative condition at the interior point are starting from this uh, 11th row so this is 21 0 minus 20 minus 1 and the terms on the right hand side will be equal to 0 and uh, these are our other unknown coefficients they will come over here and these uh, 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 mat matrix entries can be established uh, very simply okay so you can check this equation for example 
and uh, this equation is uh, 20 uh, a1 is 20 and uh, b1 the uh, multiplier of b1 is 1 the multiplier of c1 is 0 similarly the multiplier of a2 is minus 20 multiplier of b2 is minus 1 and multiplier of c2 is 0 and the multipliers of all other coefficients are also equal to 0 so in the first column we will use 20 right this is the coefficient of b2 this is a multiplier b1 this is a multiplier of c1 this is the multiplier of a2 this is the multiplier of b2 this is the multiplier of c2 and so on so this in this way we can uh, populate this entire a matrix and uh, this is the last condition which we have used here so a1 is assumed as 0 so this is our last equation so the multiplier of a1 is 1 and the multiplier of all other coefficients are 0 and at the right hand side we will use 0 so this is the multiplier of a1 all other values are 0 and this is 0 so by solving this equation uh, uh, simultaneously using MATLAB we can evaluate the coefficient values and they are also written over here and uh, it is almost impossible to solve these uh, set of 15 simultaneous equations uh, by hand so I uh, recommend all of you to write the MATLAB code for this uh, problem and after writing that MATLAB code it is very easy to evaluate these coefficients so now I am moving towards the MATLAB algorithm of supply interpolation. So you, here you can see this is our time vector and it is actually 0, 10, 15, 20 and this, this is our V vector and uh, we have to first uh, establish the A matrix. So here this is A matrix, this is X column vector and this is B. So in solving linear equations, simultaneous equations, we actually establish the form AX is equal to B. So this is AX equal to B. And uh, this is our uh, generation of A matrix and it starts from this point up to this point. So first of all, we have to uh, build the entries from one row one to row 10. So this is actually done by using this for loop. And in this for loop, the commands are given and you can write that code by yourself and similarly for the other entries of this matrix from 11 to 15 uh, we have used the derivative condition from this point up to this point we have used the derivative condition at the interior points and that is also done using this for loop and finally the value of a1 is equal to 1 or a1 equal to 0 in this uh, MATLAB code I have used uh, the value of uh, a1 equal to 1 but you can also change it to 0 so here I have used a1 equal to 0 but uh, it can also be used as a1 equal to 1 so this is the last entry in this a matrix and uh, this entry is given over here right so only this term is equal to 1 and everything other thing is equal to 0 so this is the population of uh, the A matrix now we have to populate this uh, B column vector which is at the right hand side so this B column vector is also established uh, by using this for loop so you can use this for loop finally we have used this uh, simple command of MATLAB so this is x equal to line solve AB so this will solve the equation AX equal to B and it will give you all the values of X right so after evaluating the values of all the coefficients from a1, b1, c1 to a5, b5, c5, we can calculate the time and the velocity for all the supplines. So for the first supplying, for the second, third, so we have in total five supplines. So for all the supplines, we can calculate the velocity at all the points all the intermediate points then we can use this reshape command to convert this uh, uh, time vector in, from column vector to the matrix shape as i have used over here so this is our x vector and it is actually a column vector from uh, entry 1 to entry 15 so we can use uh, this uh, method of displaying all the values 
so this is more uh, visible and more understandable to us so i have used this uh, five by three matrix uh, notation so this is a1 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 similarly these are p's values these are c values so this uh, and a style of displaying these unknown values is uh, achieved by using this reshape command right so these are the velocity values and here we have plotted our um, data points on top of our interpolation function so you will see that after running this code all data points and the interpolation function they are in absolute agreement with each other and our interpol interpolation function is passing through all of the data points so these are the displaying settings and then we have to display this uh, unknown x vector uh, in this matrix form as i have told you and uh, here you have to evaluate the velocity at t is equal to 16 and uh, from here you can see that uh, for evaluating the velocity at t is equal to 16 you have to use this supply right so this subline is actually valid from t equal to 15 up to 20. So this subline has to be used to get the velocity at t is equal to 16. And the coefficients of this subline, this subline are a3, b3, and c3. So a1 is x1, b1 is x2, this is x3, this is x4, this is x5, this is x6, this is x7, this is x8, and this is x9. So in the code, we have to use x7. Uh, and uh, x8 and x9 right so this is actually a3 t square plus b3 t plus c3 so a3 is actually x7 b3 is x8 and c3 is x9 so this is how we will calculate the velocity at t is equal to 16 and in the second part we have to calculate the acceleration at t is equal to 16 so acceleration at t is equal to 16 will be given by taking the derivative of the velocity and uh, the derivative of uh, the velocity for the third subline is 2a3 t plus b3 right so this is 2a3 t plus b3 so this is 2a3 is x7 a3 t plus this is b3 now in the final part we have to evaluate the distance uh, that the rocket has covered from t is equal to 11 to t is equal to 16. So now this is a slightly trickier part of this example. Here you can see that the interpolation function from 10 to 15 is different and from 15 to 20 is different. So from 11 to 15 we have to use this interpolation function and from t equal uh, t from 15 to 16 we have to use this interpolation function. So this whole integration is actually divided into two integrations. From 11 to 15, we will use this expression. And from 15 to 16, we have to integrate this expression. And then we will put the limits to get this answer. So that is what I have used using MATLAB. So this is the first expression. And in this expression, we have to use the second subline. Uh, and second subline has A2, B2, C2. So A2 is X4, B2 is X5, and C2 is X6. Similarly, this is x3 uh, a3 b3 and c3 and it is given by x7 x8 and x9 so this is uh, how i have uh, built two expressions which are actually integrated so the integration is carried out using this integration command so this is the integration of the first expression with respect to t t t and uh, it is uh, actually integrated from t equal to 11 to 15 so this is the second expression and it is from 15 to 16 so now let's uh, run this code so when i run this code you can see that uh, this these are our experimental data points the velocity of the rocket at t is equal to zero is zero similarly this is the second point third fourth fifth and sixth sixth point is actually lying at t is equal to 30 and all the interpolation functions or supply interpolations are passing through all the data points and the final answer that we get from this interpolation method is shown over here and you can compare this result with what i have calculated over here so let's compare these results and uh, uh, these are our 
unknown coefficients values and you can see that this is a1 b1 c1 this is a1 b1 so this is almost equal to 0 and this is 0 0.8884.928 88.88 and so on so all of these values are correct and in the second part uh, the value of the velocity at t is equal to 16 is 394.24 so this is the same value that i have used that i have calculated uh, using matlab algorithm and uh, in the next part acceleration is calculated to be 31.321 and the distance covered from 11 t equal to 11 to 16 is 1595.9 so this is 1595.9 so all the values are in good agreement and uh, one more thing I want to uh, tell you is that that code that I have written is valid for all the type of uh, data points. So here I have six data points. If I want to increase or decrease the number of data points or if I want to change the values of these data points, still I will get the acceptable answer. For example, in this manual, everything is also discussed in this manual. And here you can also see that this is the quadratic supply interpolation. So if we are using linear supply interpolation, the shape of the functions will be like this. So there will be corners at the interior points. But if we are using quadratic supply interpolation, we will get such uh, the interpolation. So you can see that there is smooth transition from the first supply to the second supply so this is linear interpolation and these are linear supplies and you can see there are corners so that approximation is not very accurate but this type of approximation is more accurate so these are all the algorithms that i have shown you already and these algorithms uh, can be established in this matlab code so when i run this matlab code i get uh, such result right and these are the unknown values and this is the plot of the supply interpolation so in the second part we are given another exercise that kindly add more data point to both the variables and as tvt equal to 35 and 800 so we can add one more data point so this is 35 i have added and here i will add 800 so now let's run this code again and you can see that again i have got acceptable results so this is a new point that i have added and still this algorithm is able to get the quadratic supplies which are passing through all the data points and you can see there is smooth transition if we have used lines linear supply interpolation then the last supply would have come from this point up to this point so there would be a corner visible but in quadratic supply interpolation you can see that the last supply is actually having a curved or smooth transition so that is all about our today's lecture and i hope you have understood all the concepts which are discussed in this lecture and you have also understood how to do the matlab coding so this is a matlab code you can write this matlab code by yourself and that will be an interesting experience for you for watching more lectures please subscribe this channel until the next lecture it's goodbye